Uh, today I'm going to show you how to uh, use a single uh, USB stick as a bootable and also to contain the save folder. So in effect that uh, this will go through uh, with you how to uh, uh, actually not have an internal hard drive at all and then have a working puppy Linux. So here is what, what I have done is I have actually removed the uh, uh, NVMe drive. So that's a one terabyte uh, NVMe drive and also the other uh, hard drive that I use mainly of a, a, a storage unit. And here is my uh, a computer uh, that's here with a cover off. It's a small mini computer that I use. And uh, right now, it let me just stick, so this is the USB uh, stick that uh, has uh, complete uh, bootable and uh, save uh, uh, persistence. Uh, so let me just put it, put this back in and we should be able to see that on the uh, screen. So, so that, so it's uh, into three, uh, three uh, partitions and this is where the save folder is. We'll just click it just to make sure that there is a save folder. So, and the other uh, USB stick that here, I, I use just to boot up the uh, computer since it has no internal hard drive. So this is a Ventoy stick that I had uh, prepared. So I needed that uh, to just boot into the, uh, uh, the, uh, of, uh, Fossa Pup 64. So then I use the uh, USB stick that's running now to get it all formatted and partitioned. So, so right now what you're looking at is a uh, one USB, which uh, is a uh, which I uh, have a Vento USB stick uh, prepared, and when we just open up uh, one you'll see that it does mount, but it is not mounted. And uh, here, uh, although you can't see it, it won't let me uh, uh, access the Ventoy uh, uh, primary ISO where I have uh, multiple ISOs. So uh, one of the I ISO obviously is the Fossa Pub 64, which uh, allowed me to uh, uh, boot into this uh, Fossa Pub 64. So then what you do is uh, once you get the uh, Ventoy to boot into Fossa Pub 64, you have this message, but we, we, we won't be installing it at this time. So we'll just go ahead and uh, just for, we'll just unmount it uh, also this. So right now Fossa Pub 64 is running on uh, RAM obviously uh, and um, so it doesn't even need to see the Ventoy ISO file. And I have uh, taken liberty of uh, having a simple screen recorder activated and set up my headphone and uh, a microphone setup. So otherwise, this is right now uh, using Ventoy. There's no internal hard drive. Uh, otherwise, we'll just go ahead and LSBLK. So there's no other... Uh, 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 disc except for Ventoy which is not uh, mounted so we'll go ahead and now what I'll do now is go ahead and stick in a USB that will be using it as a primary uh, boot disk and also storage with persistence so let me just go ahead and uh, put it in so I've inserted it into the USB uh, port and then here is SGD. Uh, so what I have done is taken a liberty of just in, uh, downloading and installing just I ISO F96E4, which is a really a recent version of Fossa Pub 64, and I find it uh, probably the best of uh, recent ISO uh, in uh, Puppy Linux for 64-bit uh, PCs, but let me just go ahead and open up the uh, 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 root folder here and let's just, let me just, this is uh, a file that's recording this YouTube. Let me just put this here.
we'll just move it into the uh, uh, primary folder root folder here so now what I want to do is go ahead and prepare this USB stick uh, for as a bootable and also it will contain the uh, uh, save folder so what w first thing what we need to do is uh, go ahead and right click and go to uh, go to system and then G parted and we need to uh, go ahead and get this prepared. It's SDG and it's a uh, 32 gig uh, USB stick actually. So I'm going to demonstrate this in a, my uh, UEFI uh, machine 64 bit. Uh, so uh, what I have to do the first thing is on this here is go ahead and go to device a partition table and we'll have to go ahead and uh, uh, unmount the uh, partition right, then uh, we're going to create a GPT GPT file this is for UEFI uh, uh, machine so we'll just go ahead and apply and it wipes out all the information uh, uh, within it so in a, what we're going to do is separate it out into First is the boot uh, boot sector and this uh, act, uh, grub and you can probably much smaller than that but we'll give a uh, 200 megabyte and we'll put this as a uh, FAT32 uh, yes FAT32 and then we'll put in the label of EFI So that's where the grub's gonna go. And the next we're gonna put in a puppy uh, file. So it's gonna be a CE4, but uh, sometimes I like to uh, uh, boot uh, also uh, uh, bookworm uh, pup64. But uh, this uh, needs uh, actually, because uh, puppy files, ISOs are very small. So we'll just give this uh, about a 4,000 so 4 gigs that's more than enough and EX4 is fine and we give a label of pups okay obviously these labels uh, is uh, whatever you want to make it to be but next is what we're gonna do is go ahead and uh, put uh, put in a uh, make a save folder where I'm gonna keep all the save files and then uh, uh, because we're going to also uh, want to have a little swap file, although in my machine I have 8 gig of a RAM, so I really don't need it, but just for demonstration purposes, we'll go ahead and, and give it a, uh, a 2 gig of RAM, uh, RAM here, a 2 gig of space for, uh, for a Linux swap. So here, this is a storage and it's uh it's i'm gonna give a majority about almost uh, 24 23 and then i'm gonna put in a label of capital s a v just to remind myself that this uh and this is becomes very important uh, when we give it a command of uh, uh on uh, setting up a boot uh, grub to tell the uh a computer that save partition is where the save folder is so we'll go ahead and add and then the last one is gonna be the Linux swap so Linux swap is fine and then now we're gonna have to write everything okay so we're gonna write everything and let it just complete it'll take a few seconds let me close and then right click on the first partition here and then we'll go down the manage flags and give it a ESP and it will just click on ESP and it'll know uh, also to boot so uh, there's uh, and then close and it's all done it's so we have it prepared for uh, as a bootable puppy USB stick with a uh, ability to have a save folder with uh, uh, within it so 
next what I like to do is go ahead and uh, so SDG1, SD, uh, 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 G2 and this is where the save folder is going to be. We're going to just open it up and then we'll go ahead and give it a new directory and then this one is save folder so on a small SAVE and we're going to specify the save folder uh, is actually be going to be uh, placed here okay so let me just get out of that now next step is to go ahead and insert the appropriate files uh, and so on in SG, uh, D, SDG2 so and this is the grub again so what we'll do here is uh, we're gonna get a frugal pup so flexible frugal installer and then first thing I like to do is to put go to the settings and notify to make sure that there's a separate save partition so and then otherwise we'll go ahead and give it an OK and then we need to put in a puppy so we go to puppy and then ISO file we know where that is so ISO file is actually within here so because we put it in to the root folder so th this is where the ISO file is so it let it find it and then we're going to direct it to make sure that it gets put into the uh, new USB stick which is SDG2 we're going to give it an OK and then we're going to create a folder here so what we're going to do is just uh, rename it just name it CE4 and then make sure you uh, tap on the uh, return uh, key you can't just say you can't just go okay uh, it will not work properly so you just make sure that you go ahead and enter return key okay and then okay and then we're gonna define where the save partition is gonna be so we're gonna it's gonna be in this the G3 so that's where it's gonna be and then we'll just double click and then also just to uh, double click just to make sure that it's gonna be in that save folder and then OK and then now it knows exactly what to do to make sure that the save uh, knows the save folder location and it's putting in the puppy uh, file so it can be booted okay now uh, we got this little message that it's all written so we're gonna go ahead and click OK and then uh, uh, configure the uh, boot uh, sector so we'll go ahead and go to the boot and then have to tell um, it's going to be put in here but we put the uh, ISO here on the 2 SDG2 under pop so we'll go ahead and go ahead and OK and then this is what CE4 is the uh, uh, folder that we put the uh, uh, puppy uh, files in so we'll just take a we can take a look and there's extra file the f puppy files are here so that's proper that's all okay and we'll give it an okay and then we want the uh, grub to be written on SDG1 okay so that's all okay and then so uh, so save uh, source for okay and everything looks okay and we're gonna get it okay and then it's written and then now we want to exit okay so now let's take a look at the uh, grub cfg file so we're gonna open it up in genie and then document line wrapping so we can see everything And then uh, let's see if we can uh, make this uh, font a little larger so you can see. So time uh, I usually uh, 
want to make the time uh, we only have one uh, uh, puppy so it can actually be zero but uh, let us go ahead and put it to two and this is uh, it's a puppy fossa 64 that's fine but for my uh, habit I just usually you'd see e4 And then here is a uh, proper uh, syntax that's automatically inserted is the p save save fold is under the save uh, label partition under the save folder so that's all correct and then I'll just save it and then now we reboot uh, without saving but next time we boot into the uh, USB stick that's been uh, newly configured. Uh, to do that, you may have to get into the BIOS uh, to, to make sure that you uh, put into the uh, uh, new uh, bootable disk without the uh, Venn toy. So we'll continue on after that. I have uh, successfully uh, booted into my uh, newly created USB uh, uh, stick. So you can see that there is SDA 1, 2, and 3. 3 is where the save folder is. Uh. And then rather than uh, going through all this setup again, what you may want to do is uh, just use the save folder that you had backed up before so although in my case that save folder uh, is from internal hard drive uh, it will contain all the application and my configuration uh, so you will have to just adjust uh, a little bit but you should be able to use uh, the save folder and I have confirmed it. So what I have done actually is just uh, so we know the save folder is here and then under that partition the save folder here so that I've actually copied uh, this uh, save folder uh, from uh, from the uh, previous uh, uh, hard drive, internal hard drive. So uh, as long as it uh, uh, just neglected 1920, that's for my re reminder of uh, uh, actually the monitor that I use. But but if you can go ahead and uh, uh, in the place the uh, folder uh, of the uh, ISO you can uh, and when you reboot here if you un, uh, assuming that you have the save folder in the uh, in the correct place that you can just reboot at this point and not save anything at all so you can just reboot and save any, not a, uh, anything at all but next time when you uh, boot into the hard drive uh, the boot into the USB it will automatically load this save folder so that should contain all the applications in your configuration and all the key binding and tray appearance and so on so uh, that's a neat trick so I won't go through all that but uh, so that's basic uh, steps to go ahead and use the uh, one USB stick uh, and in in case you do, your internal hard drive uh, does not work or is broken or you don't have it. So only disadvantage is that it may take a little longer to go ahead and uh, reboot or power off because save folder now is in the uh, USB stick rather than uh, assuming fast or internal hard drive or internal uh, SSD. So that's the only uh, real uh, negative. Otherwise, it seems to work fine.